Hey everyone, this is Ethan Grumberg, a regional vegetable specialist with Cornell Cooperative Extension's Eastern New York Commercial Horticulture Program. I'm out here again in one of our reduced tillage trials in Orange County, New York, down in the Black Dirt region. But if you haven't watched the first video in the series yet, I urge you to go back and view the tour of cover crops for reduced tillage trials on mock soil. That video reviews how we have established squash crops and heavy residue, and the performance of the many different cover crops that we've trialed. Unsurprisingly, the cover crop performance has a direct impact on the weed pressure and the cash crop, so come back after you've finished and are ready to talk about weeds. These videos were taken in late August, and the field we're looking at now is a mid-June planting of Sweet Mama Kabocha squash that was established in a terminated winter rye cover crop. Remember that rye was seeded in late September the previous year, overwintered, and put on a ton of growth in the spring. One of the primary advantages of using a winter rye cover crop for reduced tillage vine crops is that the rye effectively outcompetes and smothers out weed species that would otherwise be getting established during the spring. Now, the high lignin content rye mulch that is left in place after terminating that cover crop is not the only thing responsible for the fact that there are almost no weeds in this field. The grower did apply a mix of pre- and post-emergent herbicides about two days after planting the squash, but before the squash had emerged. He applied gramoxone or paraquat to clean up some of the smaller weeds that may have been lurking underneath the cover crop, mixed with dual magnum and reflex to provide pre-emergent weed suppression. So even though it's easy to see that there aren't many weeds in this field, we've been carefully tracking the weed pressure in the different trial fields throughout the season. The way that we do this is by randomly throwing this 3 and one third square foot PVC quadrat in the field four separate times. We then carefully count and classify all of the weeds within that quadrat in addition to measuring soil moisture and temperature. This season we completed these weed counts five times in each of the trial fields. The data from those weed counts supports what we can see from these videos. The average number of weeds per three and a third square foot quadrat over this season was just 0.1 in this winter rye field, almost no weeds at all. You may have noticed that there were some large bare spots in the rye field as well. There was some early season rodent damage that reduced the squash stand when the voles in particular ate the recently germinated squash plants and pulled up the seed in the process but we'll talk more about that in the third and final video in this series on yield and crop quality. Okay, we've moved over to a field of kabocha squash that was planted into a fall barley terminated cover crop. And you can see just observationally, there are a lot more weeds in this field. If you remember back to the cover crop tour video, we can recall that the stand of fall seeded barley was patchy, uneven, and far from uniform. The areas of highest weed pressure in this field, especially along that edge near the ditch, correspond almost exactly to the areas where there wasn't as much barley residue. The higher weed pressure was also captured in our formal weed counts. The field of kabocha planted on terminated fall seeded barley had an average of 2.15 weeds per 3 and a third square feet, statistically poorer weed control than what we saw in that winter rye field. We've now moved over to one of the fields that was planted into a spring barley. So this field wasn't planted with barley until early April this year. And even though we got very good growth, as we could see in that biomass data in the first video, that tour of cover crop video in this planting, you can see behind me that there are some weeds popping through. There are really two reasons for the higher weed pressure. First, the spring seeded barley was not as physiologically mature as the fall seeded barley in rye crops. When grasses reach physiological maturity, some of the high carbon material that makes up their stock lignifies or turns into a more stable and hard to break down fibrous form of carbon. Since the spring seeded barley had less lignin, the residue left behind after termination has broken down more quickly and allowed some weeds to break through. Perhaps of greater significance, though, is the fact that the grower decided to increase the space between rows of kabocha squash in this field. 
Since the residue from the spring barley broke down more quickly and the squash vines had more space to cover to smother out weeds, it led to a higher concentration, especially of purslane and pigweed, in those areas between rows of squash. In our formal weed counts, the field of squash planted into spring seeded barley averaged more weeds per three and a third square foot quadrat than the fall barley field, with an average of 4.95 weeds per quadrat this season. And behind me now is the field that was planted into the terminated spring seeding of oats. One thing you might notice right away is that the squash vines in this field appear to be much more vigorous than in the other fields. And you're right. The grower decided to trial a new full vine kabocha variety in this field, but planted the standard semi-bush sweet mama variety in the others. The full vine variety did a much better job smothering out the weeds between rows of squash compared to the field planted into the spring seeded barley residue though we do still see some of those pigweed seed heads poking through the canopy. It may have just been due to the full vine squash variety better out competing weeds, but there were statistically significantly fewer weeds in this field planted into spring seeded oats compared to the spring seeded barley field, only 2.4 weeds on average per three and a third square feet. We're now going to look at one last field. This is the field that we used as our conventionally tilled bare ground control plot for the trial. You can see that there are quite a few weeds that have popped up here. The grower used the same exact herbicide program on this bare ground field as in the other reduced tillage fields, an application of Paraquat, Dual, and Reflex a few days after seeding. The growers also made four passes in the season with a Perfecta Harrow, to keep down weeds with mechanical cultivation until the vines were too large to make it through with a tractor. While mechanical cultivation can be a very effective approach to weed management, it does have a number of disadvantages. First, as can be seen, disturbing the field on these very lightly textured soils makes it much more prone to loss from wind and water erosion. Second, disturbing the soil after an application of pre-emergent herbicides often reduces the efficacy of those herbicides by destroying the chemical barrier in the soil and allowing more weeds to escape control. Finally, and most importantly, mechanical cultivation takes time. Though many farmers don't like to apply a dollar value to their time worked, each pass with a Perfecta during a busy time of year does come at the cost of a lost opportunity to complete work elsewhere. Many farms will also have employees hand hoe squash fields as well, resulting in an even higher labor cost per acre. Our experience in three years of trialing has been that the bare ground fields consistently have higher weed pressure than our top performing reduced tillage fields, despite all that extra labor. In this case, this bare ground field averaged 20 weeds per quadrat this season, statistically the worst weed pressure of any of the trial fields. Of course, you don't have to just take my word for it. Let's hear from the growers. Joe Jottis, Jottis Farms grower of 200 acres of uh, crops on a muck soil. When you plant the squash, you only got maximum two days to put your herbicide down before that squash pops out of the ground. But when you harvest it, it it's clean as a whistle. It's real tough to keep the weeds out cultivating. You're cultivating them four or five times, you're hand hoeing them a couple times, and, and it's labor. Uh, the spring seeding, I really like that uh, I actually sprayed some buckdrill over it, you know, when it was about six inches high. Then when I was ready to kill the barley with the Roundup, uh, you know, there was hardly any weeds at all. Hi, I'm Lou Javis from Javis Farms. We're doing some trials with Ethan from Cornell with the cover crops on squash. I really think there's a lot of potential for it's it. It's unbelievable that there's very little weed problems. As long as you get the rye and the barley up high and burn it down good, and we, we seem to do a pretty good job with it. This work has been made possible by support from a USDA specialty crop block grant administered by the New York Farm Viability Institute. Thanks especially to the grower cooperators who have participated in this research and to Sarah Tobin for editing this video. Keep an eye out for the last video in this series on yield and crop quality impacts of the reduced tillage treatments coming soon. Be sure to also check out the Cornell Cooperative Extension Eastern New York Commercial Horticulture Program website for more information on our work, enych.cce.cornell.edu.